So if I look at, if I look at, um, I go back through oh, this. Oh, no, sorry. Wait, wait to start okay. pushing, just close the door. Conversation about it, I assume you definitely liked it more than I did. Uh, how do you know? Because <laughs> I really, really didn't like it. Oh, okay. Then yes, perhaps. If the art is not good, the experience, that's where I was getting lost. I was trying to go from experience to artist. Right. If the art isn't good, then. It's hard to have an experience. Ex exactly. And the talking about, in theory, be taking it out of which want museums, putting it in, it, to me, that's all fine and dandy to talk about, but then you have to take a step back and look who was there. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, I was very surprised at how many people were there when I was there, because there was two school groups going through, mm -hmm. and then there were probably about another dozen people wandering through at various times. And I was expecting it to be much less, that was because I went there, I think on Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday afternoon or so, just before they were opening late, and I figured most people would come after work, I was there four o'clock, and that I was pleasantly surprised, but to me, I still don't see any sort of, other than getting the building, which is sort of the norm, I don't see them really pushing any sort of, this is taking art out of its normal places, I don't really see them trying to attract a new crowd, it's this, most of the people there are either the tourists, mm -hmm. or the same people who go to the museum, or the art world of Montreal, and uh, then obviously schools, I right. didn't see any I had no idea if they would be successful in attracting uh, which one crowd that normally doesn't go see art. Right. And given the just sense of foreboding or the, the imposing nature of the building, mm. I don't think they would be, that they were, I would venture guess that they didn't get that many people who don't go see other art. Well, if you don't know that the Biennale is happening there, there's mm -hmm. no way in hell you're going to end up in there yes. because they're, the signage was very minimal. Mm -hmm. And, you know, tr obviously that's not a place where people are used to seeing art. So I think that you're right. They would have had to do quite a lot of work. Um, it sounded to me from the, I, I, there was one, there was, what I liked was that contrary to you, there was, it was dead in there. There was like, you know, there might have been like a, two dozen people in the whole building when I was there. And I actually thought that that was something that made that, that sense of soullessness that I was talking about at the beginning, I really feel that it's connected to not being able to experience art with others. That often when we go into our museums and that, we're very much alone in front of an artwork. And that although at times there's a contemplative and reflective element that's, that can be really interesting, I feel that that sharing and interactivity and this kind of idea of the individual us being connected to the collective is something that in the visual arts is really a stretch. Unless unless it's like a performance, unless, you know, like, uh, for example, Nadia Mir, who wasn't there, but I really liked her art room, uh, the SCAR project in particular, because of all the, it's interactive, usually she would have been there, you could actually hands-on participate. I mean, there was a co-creating element to her work where people that came in and then their, their art was up on the wall as well as her own. Um, and I mean that became her art piece, but it was really a collective art piece. Um, uh, there's, I find that there's something for me that um, lo that I lose in the experience of looking at or, or in, uh, art, visual art in that particular way. That if it's the, because other people aren't involved or I'm not engaged in that way, that there's something for me that 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 doesn't just hit home the same way. Yeah, and I agree with you, and it's the sort of thing, I, although I expect the art to engage me, even if the artist isn't there, or that the, the interactivity yeah. is not done probably, there's, to me there's gotta be something within the artwork itself that engages me, with Nadja in particular, yeah, I do have a check mark next to her large prints, the, those right. big pictures were spectacular. Yeah, and I, I think that they're, they're just around the education piece, I really feel like, um, I think that the future, where we're moving to, uh, as far as arts participation and engagement, um, collectively, uh, both in Quebec and Canada, and I think elsewhere, is is much more, it's less about that passive participation. And I think that if the Biennale is not doing its work, and it's more about than just getting school children in and doing some bullshit about, 
you know, sitting down with a piece of paper and, and although I think that's important, I think you can just take it so much further than that. And I, I don't know what their what their education program was about, but um, I do feel that that should be much more integrated into the way that it's presented. But it sounded to me like, especially two years ago, what Claude, Claude Gasselin was, and he got a lot of criticism for this, that people were saying, well, where's the art? You know, like there isn't any art up on the wall. It's all about, you know, creating things electronically and interactivity. And I, I think that there's a fine line that you walk sometimes between um, bringing that engagement and public participation to actually, you know, people's sense of what art is and what their expectations are in walking in to see an art show. Um, and he got, I think he got slammed two years ago. Uh, and so, you know, this is, was a little bit different. Um, so it's also here. It's, I know the, uh, there's my head of their educational program, Linda Gosslens, Goss, I'm going to butcher her last name. It's a Belgian last name, but she actually taught me. And she's a spectacular museum educator. Okay. She does a phenomenal job, so not having participated, but I would have complete faith in her Where aspects. Were, yes. right. and how so she was, that's part of what they were trying mm -hmm. to do. Yeah, and it looked like they'd worked with groups beforehand. Mm -hmm. Like there was that room on children having done some artistic work themselves, and they kind of put a little photo montage mm -hmm. that looked a bit like a cartoon. But, but then it's the sort of thing, if that becomes, if that's supposed to be an integral part of the experience, then why don't you just set it up in such a way so that, as opposed to letting people wander through on their own, no. We will have groups leaving every 15 minutes right. on the quarter hour, and at which point if they're five, great. If they're 12, great. If they're 20, we get two people to lead them going through different ways. To me, to have that as an important way of dealing with the art and then not make sure that everybody experiences it that way, to me, is just a waste of energy. Mm. I like the fact that each room or each level had at least two or three people there that you could talk to. And that as soon as you walked in, they said, look, there's, we have these folks that are hanging around, and if you have any questions, then, you know, please feel free to ask them. And I actually, you know, consider myself fairly knowledgeable. And I was, you know, sometimes the young women would come up to me and, and start to, you know, ask me questions and start talking about stuff, and I really like that component. Okay, nice, I, I definitely, old school, I yeah. wanna deal with the art myself. Did you ask me what was up with the motorcycle? I had no fucking idea what was up there with Washington because I didn't even know. I looked to see who put that yeah. piece there. And there's no tech. Okay. And then on top of it, I think it was busted. Oh, uh, cool. yeah. I don't that. I don't know about that, but that mm. was the one. The one room that I felt the signage signage was not yes. clear. I think it was the guy that did the stuff downstairs. I don't know, mm -hmm. but it was a, there was a. I, anyways. It, who knows yes. about that? But I, I, I kind of like, like I didn't feel that they were imposing the people mm -hmm. that were there. That if you didn't want to engage with them, they just kind of stood yeah, well, back. They, they definitely did stand back. They like, I think I got asked once, "Do you have any questions?" And I sort of growled at them and said, "No," <laughs> and then they gave me my space. But again, it comes down to, oh uh, yeah, that my expectations of <laughs> that, yeah, my expectations of the way that I like experiencing art were not what they were offering for an awful lot of the time. So what what were your expectations about experiencing well, in art? In terms of, I, it, I tend to view an art object okay. and then concentrate on it and try and figure it out and understand it. To me, that, that whole sense of discovery is extremely important to me. Mm -hmm. And if there is something that I can discover within it, then it just knocks my socks off and makes me happy to pick and shit. Uh, if it's the sort of thing where it's all right in front and there's no sense of discovery, then looking at uh, which one, the, the quality of the work, uh, the craftsmanship, if necessary, is something else that I can get engaged in. But then realizing, okay, in certain cases it's just straight theory, and at which point it's a boring theory, then I'm not really going to be terribly, but I'm not going to be terribly, look at it terribly fa uh, favorably. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely old school when it comes to looking at art. I'm definitely like doing it from the 50s. This is what it's supposed to be. This is how it's supposed to be. And then having enough of an education, bringing enough of an education to it so that you can figure it out yourself as opposed to having somebody spoon feed you what they're all about. Yeah, I don't see it as spoon feeding. I, mm -hmm. I, I felt that, um, you know, I think the contemporary art scene gets criticized a lot that people have no idea what's happening. And that, um, 
you know, I think that having people available to talk to, I think is, is a, a, about addressing some of that. Um, and um, See, but there I'd be coming back as opposed to making them available versus, yeah, force, uh, not almost forcing people to do it. As I said, if they had set it up so that there was a tour guide who was leading you through mm -hmm. and a well-trained educator, to me, that would have been probably a much better experience than allowing people to go through on their own and expecting them to ask questions. Because even though, though it was a different uh, which one, the setup for viewing art in a different building and so on, still had a sort of museum-like quality to it. For sure. I mean, I think, you know, I look at my notes here and I, you know, I pretty much, j'ai fait le tour, mm -hmm. you know, I've pretty much kind of gone, gone over what I wanted to go mm -hmm. over. I don't, I don't think that, um, like I wasn't blown away mm -hmm. by the experience. No, to me it's the sort of thing where just thinking, and it's, uh, it's very telling that we're talking more about the Biennale in theory and their, and it as a whole as opposed to the specific art. Mm -hmm. Sort of thing with the Triennale that's coming up in October yeah. at the museum. My guess is they're not going to be real heavy on the theory and that there's this linking thing together and we're doing it. They're just saying, this is kick-ass art. Right. And to me, a Biennale, right. a, by any art exhibition, I really could care less about the title, but it still should be kick-ass art. Right. And this had little of it.